So now we've got a basic idea of refraction and refractive index. We can start looking at a specific example of this to do with lenses. Uh, so we're going to look in this little section on lenses, convex lenses and concave lenses, how they form images, and we're going to then try to apply that to the structure of the eye and how we correct um, defects with the structure of the eye in the second half of this little section. So we need to start from thinking about a convex lens. Here's how we normally would draw a convex lens, bending outwards in the middle. But in order to understand what it does to light, we need to try and split it up into some prisms, because that will make it a little bit clearer what's going on. So we shine some parallel lines at the prisms. Here's our normal lines in purple. What's going to happen to this one? Well, it's going from air into glass, so it's going to bend towards the normal. What's going to happen to this one? Well, it's going along the normal, so it's going to carry straight on. So there they go. They hit a normal again on the other side at right angles to the surface. This is now going from glass into air, so it's going to bend away from the normal. So rather than coming back parallel, this angle is going to get bigger and it's going to come down here. This one's still going down a normal, so that one's just going to carry straight on. All the other ones you can have a look at. Okay, and they all meet at a point here. We call that point the focal point. And we call the distance from the lens to the focal point the focal length. Here's how you get a diagram to show you where the image is in a convex lens. It's really clever because you only have to draw two beams and whatever you do, you draw the same two beams and the diagram will work out the answer for you. So we start off with the image, no, sorry, the object a long way away. We always draw this ray. This ray is going straight through the center of the lens so it doesn't bend, it's traveling along the normal both of these points. So that one goes straight on. We need another ray. This ray is going parallel to the axis, and we've just seen that if it goes parallel to the axis, it will go down through the focal point. Where's the image formed? Well, the image is formed where those two meet. That's here. And if you were good enough at maths and you had enough geometry, you could work out that every other beam that goes from there through that lens, they'll all go through that point. But we don't need to do that because two beams is enough to show us where we're going. So here's the image. Crucial thing to understand about this image is it's got three properties. Perhaps the most obvious one is it's upside down or inverted. Um, second, it's smaller than the original object, so it's diminished. And thirdly, the actual rays of light do pass through this point. So if I put a piece of paper there, I would form an image on that piece of paper, and we call that a real image. So three properties of this image are it's inverted, it's diminished, and it's real. If I move uh, this chap here towards the lens, you'll notice that as we go past this distance here at twice the focal length, okay, even though we've drawn the diagram exactly the same, we've now got an image which is magnified. It's still inverted, it's still real, but it's now a magnified image. And if we go even closer, we get to the point where the image is still over here somewhere, but just off the screen. But once we pass the focal point, right at the focal point, these two rays are parallel, so they're not going to meet in either direction. But if we keep going further, now they are meeting, and then slightly scarily, in comes the big fellow from behind. So the only way we're going to get this image is by looking through the lens. So we put our eye over here, we look through the lens, you'll notice this is the right way up or erect, this is magnified, and this is what we call a virtual image. You can't put a piece of paper there and get a big image, you can only see it from this side with your eye. If we move on, we can put some numbers to magnification. So we'll, rather than saying it's magnified or it's diminished, we can actually put a number to it. So if I had an image which is 2 meters tall, and I took a picture and it was only 0.2 meters tall, the magnification would be the height of the image divided by the height of the object, 0.2 over 2. 0.2 over 2 is 0.1. No units because it's a ratio. We could call that 200 centimeters and that 20 centimeters. That would still be 0 0.1. Um, if we do it with the spider to make a big picture of a spider, okay, we've gone from 0 0.5 to 4. So the magnification is the image height divided by the object height, which gives us a magnification of 8. Okay, notice that this number is bigger than 1. It means that the image is bigger than the object. So it's magnified. If it's smaller than 1, then it's diminished. Okay, 
So concave lenses, again, almost identical, just one very important difference. So we're still drawing one beam of light through the center of the lens, and we're still drawing a parallel beam. But the crucial thing is, in a concave lens, this parallel beam doesn't come down through the focal point, it goes up, and it goes up as if it had come from the focal point here. So this ray of light is going up there. We have to look through the lens to see the image. Here's our image, look at its properties. It's erect, it's diminished, and it's virtual. We have to look back through the lens to see it. This line here, you'll generally see drawn as a dashed line, but in this animation, it's a solid line. It's not actually a beam of light. It's a construction line that we've drawn to work out where the image will be. If we move our little jelly baby towards the lens, you'll notice that between f and 2f, still the same properties. And even when we go close to the focal point, it's still diminished, it's still erect, and it is still a virtual image. Okay, so a little bit less complicated with concave lenses, maybe a slightly harder diagram to draw, but you'll always get the same answer. Okay, here's a little summary of that and some uses.